So last but not least, we move on to our conclusion. So the very last thing that stays in your reader's mind. Three steps. Number one, we're going to remind the reader of our contention and or point of view. Okay, so either contention or point of view. I'm going to call it contention from now on. Okay, as long as you remember the contention means our point of view. So we're going to remind the reader of our contention. This is pretty much what the conclusion is about. We want the reader to agree with us that our contention is the right one. We don't want the reader to get to the end of our essay and go, mm, no, I agree the other way. We want the reader to side with us. We've done all this work. We want to make sure that our contention gets across and ultimately the, the, the reader agrees with us, agrees with our point of view. Number two, we're going to reword our four topic sentences and summarize our main arguments. So we already have four topic sentences throughout our essay. Let's put them into our conclusion and simply reword them so they don't sound repetitive. We've already done the hard work in constructing our topic sentences and what our paragraphs are going to be about. So we're just going to reword them in our conclusion. Why do you think we would include our topic sentences, a rewording of, in our conclusion? Thing. So you can remind the reader about, like, like you can remind them about what the whole thing is about, like, get, get, the, top, get the topic in their head, like, more? Yep, so we're definitely trying to remind our reader what we've written. Definitely. Chloe? So you try to remind them of the topic, the point of view, and what the topic is about. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, Martin? To summarize the arguments. Brilliant. Okay. So we want to make sure that our reader, if after reading our four body paragraphs, before reading our conclusion, they've gone to get a coffee before they read our conclusion. We want to remind them what's been in our essay. We don't want them to forget. We've done all that hard work. We've written four body paragraphs that we don't want anyone to forget. So we're going to remind them what was written in each of those. And number three, really important, we're going to link back to the essay prompt to prove to the reader that our arguments are valid and correct. So we have a big linking sentence here at the end. <coughs> I'm going to show you an example of the conclusion. Before I do that, are there, any, are there any questions about these three steps here? A conclusion is simply reminding your reader of your contention and your arguments. Reminding your reader of your contention and your arguments. Here's an example. In Pavana by Deborah Alice, see they fixed their mistake and they're now underlined Pavana. Because you can restate that as well if you want to remind your reader. In Pavana by Deborah Alice, Pavana had to break the laws set by the Taliban, showing that in some circumstances breaking the law is the right thing to do. So we've now reminded our reader of our point of view, our contention. For example, she dressed like a boy to work and travel in the marketplace, dot, dot, dot. We put in our other three examples there. Therefore, Deborah Alice teaches her readers that depending on the situation, breaking the law could be the right thing to do. It's linking back to the essay prompt to prove to the reader that your statements are valid and correct. Your conclusion should be the length of your introduction, if not a little bit shorter. So in Pavana by Deborah Alice, Pavana had to break the laws set by the Taliban, showing that in some circumstances breaking the law, the law is the right thing to do. 
For example, she dressed like a boy to work and travel in the marketplace, dot, dot, dot. You would therefore list your other three arguments. Remember, it's just a rewording of your topic sentence. So if we look at the introduction for our first paragraph, within the novel Bhavana, it is clear that breaking law is the right thing to do in some cases. We've reworded it there because we know that in the first paragraph we discussed it was about Pavana dressing up as a boy. So we've reminded our reader of that. Therefore, Deborah Alice, obviously the author again demonstrating textual knowledge there, teaches her readers that depending on the situation, breaking the law could be the right thing to do. Any questions about the conclusion? Okay, Haley. Sorry, um, that's how, okay. How many uh, sentences? Sorry, that's not. Okay, so how many sentences do we need for the conclusion? I'm going to give you a rough estimate. So, in Pavana by Deborah Alice, Pavana had to break the law, set by the Taliban, showing that in some circumstances breaking the law is the right thing to do. We have one sentence there, could be broken up to two if you wanted to. For example, you can list these. Or you might want to put them into two sentences. So we've got four sentences so far. Therefore, Deborah Alice, Deborah Alice teaches us, etc. So about five sentences. So I'd say conclusion: five to six sentences. Mia. Um, at start, should we say in Deborah Alice? It is up to you. Up to you. You could get rid of in Pavana by Deborah Alice and jump straight into it. Nirvana had to break the law set by the Taliban, showing that in some circumstances, breaking the law is the right thing to do. That would be perfect. Hey, we're, we're just reminding you when we Thank you. Okay, three R's. Reminding, rewording, restating. I love that, Haley. I'm going to steal it forever. Reminding, rewording, restating. I think everyone should write that down in their essay notes. So conclusion is reminding, restating, rewording. Excellent. So you're now ready to start writing your essay.